All right, so we're going to see how to build a fundamental process book display, one that shows us information about some asset that we're interested in. We use the word asset to refer to any piece of equipment or organization or really thing that we want to see data about. So here, this is a reactor overview, so the asset in this case is a reactor, and I have a picture of the reactor, I have information about the reactor, and I have a nice graph that shows me information about my reactor. And you could build one of these displays for anything, anything you, that you're interested in watching. So I'm going to show you how to build this exact display, including text, uh, putting values on the display, putting a little graphic on the display, and building a trend. So let's get started. So the first step is you're going to want to start a new display. So once process book is open, click new and process book display file. And you can name it something like, um, what I'll call mine is reactor display. It's like that. And I'll get a blank, blank sheet. Now, one thing you'll notice is it goes full screen, but if you click the, um, the, the reduce button here in the top, you'll see that each of these displays is its own window in process book. If you double click it, it'll be full screen in process book, or it'll take up the whole process book editing window. When you're building a display, you're going to be using build mode. That's this button here. The one next to it is run mode. Run mode lets you use the display as a, as a, an observer, like an operator would. Build mode allows you to build new process book displays. Since we're building a process book display, we're going to use build mode. Also, go to tools, preferences, and make sure that prefer run mode is unchecked while you're building displays. Okay, so we're going to say apply and say OK. And the first thing we want to add to our display is some text. So go click on the text button and then click in your display. I'm making a reactor overview. And I know I also, I'm going to add some other text. I know I want to have a density. And I know I want to have uh, the level shown. And I know I can also just copy and paste these, copy paste, put them down here and then double click and edit them, change it to the height and temperature, temperature, just like that. Now I want these to be larger too, so I can select them all and on my formatting toolbar up top, I can select a new size, 20, that's good. I can also select different colors for the marker. So I could make it black, I could make them blue. I'm going to go with black right now. Very good. And my reactor overview, well, I want that one to be big too. So I'm going to select 20. And I wanted to have a nice blue background for it. So for that, I can select this rectangle option and just click, drag, release. And I'll create a rectangle on my display. Now, you'll notice when I move it over the text, it's going over the text here. So I want this to be in the back. So to, to arrange that, once with the rectangle selected, go to Arrange, Send to Back. And now the reactor text is over the blue background. And I can also change this to make the background see-through. So with the background color, None. Now I have that nice blue bar with the uh, reactor overview on top of it. That's nice. Yeah. Also, I want to have my text here really, really looking good because I like good looking displays. And I can use my arrow keys to get some fine adjustment. Or I can just select all of my text and go to Arrange, Align, and then I can align it to one side or the other. I want it aligned right down this right side here. Yeah, just like that. Good. Okay, so that's adding text and basically editing, doing the basic edits to a display. Next, I want to add, next I want to add some values to these so I can see what's going on right now with my reactor. This is going to be a new symbol. This is the value symbol. If you click the value symbol in build mode, and then again, you'll just click on your display area. And now we need to go find where in the Pi system the density actually is recorded. And 
link that to this value symbol that we're putting onto our display. To do that, click the arrow button right here, go to AF2, and this is where we're going to get to search our Pi system for our chemical reactor. So we click search, and you'll be brought to this rather large search area that might be a bit intimidating, but don't worry, I'll, I'll show you how to use it. So first off, there's only a few drop downs you'll need to use for the purposes of this exercise or building this kind of display. You need to know what type of asset you're looking for. Now, these might be things like meters, they might be inverters, they might be a factory. I know I'm looking for a chemical reactor. Now this whole list is going to be built by your Pi administrator. And they're all going to be built for your needs. I know I'm looking for a chemical reactor and your list might look very different. It may have completely different assets, but just go onto this list from template and find the type of asset you're interested in. So I'm looking for a chemical reactor and I know that the name of my chemical reactor I'm looking for is named Red Fox. So I'm going to type in Red Fox here for the Red Fox reactor. And I'm going to click make sure that search sub elements is selected. Everything else you don't you don't necessarily need to worry about right now. So don't worry about this or here, here, here. All you need to worry about is the template and maybe if you know the name, the name. You'll click search and it'll go out and search your Pi system and I see I have 16 attributes that come back. I'm looking for the density and I'll see there, there's the density right there. So I'm just going to double click on the density and I see it gets selected in the select AF attribute, it has a unit of measure and everything so I'll say OK. And I do want the units to be shown so I'm going to click show units which will allow me to show the units that are attached to that to that asset in the Pi server the Pi system and there it is look at that the value in the units come onto my sheet um, and I can do the same thing with another value so now I'm looking for level so I'm gonna do the same thing go to AF2 search this you know select your chemical reactor You'll type in the name that you're interested in, Red Fox for me. And this time, I'm interested in looking for level. I see, there it is. Okay. So I'm going to click level, show units, and now I have the level of my reactor. And again, I can copy and paste these values and do it a bit faster the next time. So now I'm looking for height. There's height, double click that, and temperature. Again, I'm going to select my chemical reactor, I'm searching for Red Fox. And again, remember, all I'm searching for here is chemical reactor and a name, and then I'm searching the sub elements. And I'll find temperature temperature right there. So I have all these values on my sheet now and like before I want these to be easy to see and well aligned so I'm gonna select them all and select the font size to be larger and I'm going to arrange them to now be arranged to the left. Yeah that's good and I want the text to be black and I'll use my arrow keys to get them to be lined up like I want them to be lined up. Great. And there we go. That's that's getting values onto my sheet. If you want to make sure that you actually have these Pi tags correctly um, attached and that they're, they're pulling real Pi system data, you can switch to run mode and you can scroll around in time and any any values that are attached to a value that changes in time should change as you change the time query. So you just grab this bar here and you scroll through it. So that's adding values. 
Next, we want to add a picture because people like pictures. When If I see a reactor overview, I want to have a visual that shows me that this is the reactor overview. To do that, I can go to Symbol Library while in build mode and then click, drag, drop. And I'm brought into this Symbol Library. Now, this is a big library with lots of different fun symbols. And you can go in here and you can have a field day and look for whatever it is you want to add. I know that I'm interested in adding a particular tank that looks like my chemical reactor. Here it is. Reinforced tank with mixer. So I double click that and it comes onto my sheet. And I can change the size and everything else with it. But very good. I also want to add, you know, make my display um, more, more easy on the eyes. Gray is great, and I want it to be white. So I'm going to go and double click on server time, and I'm brought into display settings. Here you can select a new background color. You can choose a custom color if you want to. I'm just going to choose white. And we get a white background. And you'll notice that now the background color of my text and my values comes through. So what I can do is I can just highlight all of these and select none for the background color. And there I got a nice formatted process book sheet. The next step after adding my graphic and my text and my values is to add a graph, a trend. Now in build mode, we'll click the trend symbol right here. And now you'll click hold and then release where you want your trend to go. It's going to be very similar to when we were configuring these values here. You're going to be searching for an AF asset just the same way. Now I'm looking interested in finding the average and the volume of my reactor. So I'll click this AF2. Again, I'm searching. I'm going to search for Red Fox reactor. And I want the average, the average. So I'll double click it. Yeah, that's what I want. And I'll see it gets added into my area that will be plotted. So any, any items that get put into this field will be plotted in the trend. Now to add the other one, I'll just come in here, search. And I'll find the volume. And now I see I got my trend with a value on it. If I want to adjust the time scale, I can do that right here with plot time. I can change the range to be maybe the last week. I'll see that more time is shown on my trend now. Yeah, that's just the way I want it. Now I just want to add some text to indicate what's on this trend. So I'm going to copy some text from here. Double click it and say average and volume. And there we are. That is a my basic process book asset display that shows me the current status, the dashboard of a reactor in this case. With a trend, with values, um, with currently updating values. And I can see it change if I open up my run mode and just scroll through time. Lastly, to save our display, you'll go to File, Save As, and select the location you want to save the display. I've been saving mine to the desktop. Reactor Display, Save. And next time we open up PyProcess Book, you can just double click on that display, and it will open up PyProcess Book straight to the display we built. And that's it! That's how easy it is to build a basic display and process book that can start showing you information about an asset of interest to you right away.